let's try to add a new model and confirm now you see it says new model added successfully and come back to the config yaml and you can actually see that this code llama config is added now through the ui if you are any close to the ai space or to this channel you are already aware that there is a revolution happening in the ai api pricing it's getting cheaper and better day by day switching between different ai api provider is like juggling with fire it's complex, it's risky, and there is those pesky API keys that needs to be managed. An AI API proxy can be a savior here. With AI API proxy, you can have one standard endpoint for your app and one key to manage for your app, while under the hood, you can still test all the latest large language model and change it for your applications without making any application code change. Hi, my name is Avijit. You're watching Know Together, where I try to simplify latest tech and innovations for your future and your business. Let's get started. Welcome back. In this tutorial video, we'll cover primarily four elements. First, very briefly, we'll cover why you need an AI API proxy. Second, why Light LLM. Third, where we'll try to do a demo by showing you how to run Light LLM as proxy server and use different features such as load balancing etc and finally fourth where i'll show you how you can set up your own ui and you can manage the light llm proxy server using the ui let's start apart from the overhead of managing and migrating different ai provider and their api keys there are several benefits that an AI API proxy will give you, especially when you are building an AI application for your customers. First, it will ensure you'll have only one API standard for your entire application, regardless of what models or AI provider that you are using. Second, it will help you manage your API cost and budget. So you will be able to see in one place about all the different providers and their cost and budget, and you will be able to control the budget. Third, load balancing. If you are building an application that uses AI API provider, you must have load balancing to ensure that if one of your provider goes down, you still have some other provider that will serve the app for your users. This is the open AI status page. If you see here on 8 November around, they had like two hours, 21 minutes of major outage. So if you're building a production grade app and you are dependent on open AI as your AI API provider, then it might cost your applications to go down as well when your provider goes down. Whereas if you use an API proxy, then probably using load balancer or similar other feature, you can still serve your customer maybe by calling another provider when OpenAI API is throwing error. Fourth, efficient error handling. So whenever an API provider will throw an error, it could be a timeout error or something else. You should not impact your customers when you are building your applications. Finally, fifth, caching. And this will save a lot of the API cost. Caching will ensure that in the long run, if a uh, same API request is being used by your two different customers, you do not necessarily need to go back to your API provider and get the response back. Rather, you can serve the customer from your cache. In my previous video where I have run multiple large language model in my local computer using Olama, I have used LightLLM and primarily LightLLM provide a OpenAI specific standard regardless whatever AI model that you run in your backend. And this is really good because if you are building an app and tomorrow if you want to change your API provider for example from OpenAI to Google, you really do not need to change a lot of the thing in your code, rather you just need to set up your proxy to call Google's Gemini rather than OpenAI's API. To start, let's go back to my Visual Studio. Let me create a folder here called LLM Proxy UI Demo. And I'm going to go into the folder. You can create a Conda environment. Conda create minus N Proxy LLM UI. Let's say my environment name. And I'm going to use Python 3.11. Now I already have the environment created. So I'll just activate the environment. There you go. Let's install install light llm once your light llm is installed all you have to do is just create a file let's say we name it config.yaml the first thing we will set a master user key now this is not a mandatory step you can still run your proxy without a master key now we will say light llm settings logs will be barbers nothing again this configuration is not mandatory you can skip that as well let me actually open this file here in the editor and then it will be easy to set up I will define different model list. The first model that we want to set is our 
GPT 3.5 Turbo. This is the model name GPT 3.5 Turbo and this is the light LLM parameter. So this model name will be used when your application will call light LLM proxy. And this model will be used when light LLM in the backend will call the OpenAI API. Let's create our second model. So for this one, I will use uh, OpenAI router because OpenAI router provides a lot of the API for free. I have already explained in earlier video how you can use OpenAI router. So please check that out. Again, I have created an API key from OpenAI router page. And then I'm using the Mistral 7 billion instruct model because that is free. And so again, when my application will call the light LLM proxy, it will use this name. However, when light LLM will actually call the open router, it will use this model name. So now that we have set up our first two models, let's give it a test. First, let's start the light LLM. Okay, so our light LLM proxy is available on 8000 port and let's test it out. We open my postman and I'm going to call chat completion call using GPT 3.5 turbo. We change it here and we are seeing what LLM are you? Now you can see that it has responded. In the authorization header, I am using the API key that we have used here. So with one user API key, now we can actually call multiple LLM. Let's test with Mistral 7 billion instruct. Now if I use Mistral 7 billion instruct and ask the same question, this should give me a response from the Mistral AI. You can see that. Okay, so as a next feature, we will try to use light LLM as a proxy as well as load balancer. To do that, we will run Olama in our local system. Uh, so we have specified the target model as Olama. It's running on 11434 port. This moment, we have same model name for two different configurations, one from Olama, another from my open router configurations. Yeah. So you can see it has actually called my local Olama setup and have given me the response that it's from Mistral 7 million model. Then try to send the same request. So if you see, it has now got the response from the open router Mistral AI endpoint. Now that we have again retried, we can see it has now got response from Olama Mistral. So our load balancing is working, but let's see what happens if this provider goes down, which is my local Olama provider goes down. So I come to WSL and I say stop. So now if we go and hit the request once again, it should automatically connect Mistral AI, which is my open router endpoint and serve the request this is how your load balancing will work so even in case of an api provider goes down your proxy should be able to serve from another provider without making any changes in your app now let's go and see how you can set up the simple ui and manage all these models from the ui itself so this is the project that i created which actually is run a very simple ui to manage your alight llm proxy you have all the instruction steps in this github link i will also attach the link in the descriptions first thing first you have to install docker in your system i already have docker running so we will follow the instructions so basically we will create a folder for llm proxy first so mkdir llm proxy now we'll go inside the llm proxy second it says you have to create the docker compose file like this so we are in the llm proxy we will create the docker compose.yaml and just paste it. Next, it says you should run docker compose up minus d. At this point, you should have docker desktop running. Now, I have already created that earlier, so I will start the AppSmith instance from here. But for your instance, it will pull the image and it will start in your docker instance. Once it started, um, you should be able to access the app smith using this port 8081 or 8443 i'll use 8081 and connect to my app smith for you also it will take some time while it will start so the next step is to clone this repository so let's clone this repository here and here you will see a file for light llm proxy ui by notogether.json so what you have to do is simply go here click this dots click import import from file select this and open this should load the applications that i have created now that i have put it into full screen you should see an ui like this to use the application what you have to do first you have to set the base url for your light llm proxy because i am running this app in my as a docker container 
instead of 0000, I will give host.docker.internal. So this will ensure that it will come to the host of the Docker image where my app is running, and then it will connect to the 8000 port. I think it will be same for you, but if you are running your light LLM proxy somewhere in your cloud, you should give that cloud URL here. In the user key, if you have defined the user key, you should provide the user key here and then hit connect. So it is showing that it has connected successfully. Let's test by giving a different port and you should see it's not able to connect. Okay, so now we are able to connect and you will be able to see that we have these two model, one GPT 3.5 Turbo and Mistral 7 B Strap. So if I select this, it shows me all the config here. You can create new models. Let's try to add a new model. So we'll select add. Um, let's give the name as code llama. Uh, we use the same llama slash code llama. Um, use the same port where my llama is running. Because I've already downloaded code llama, it should work. API key is not mandatory for locally hosted model, so I'll just give it blank. You can just type anything here basically and set all the default values and confirm now you see it says new model added successfully now if you do a refresh you should be able to see the code llama here and just to confirm that it has actually this ui has actually worked you can come back to the config yaml and you can actually see that this code llama config is added now through the ui now for any reason if you want to delete this all you can do is again you can select code llama uh, hit delete so it shows the model id and the model name and hit delete and the model will be deleted successfully and if you go to the yaml file now you won't be able to see that and with that we have covered all the four modules that we wanted to discuss in this video if you find value in this video please subscribe to the channel give it a like and let me know if you need me to cover other features of the light llm proxy such as the custom exception handling and error handling and all the other feature like logging you can do a lot of thing with proxy really and take care subscribe to the channel and i'll see you on the next one bye